Only two more months left of football season. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Another episode of Locked on Baylor. I'm your host, Cam Stewart. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. And boy, do we have a fun one to break down. The Putt Bowl. Texas Tech 39, Baylor 14. One step forward, two steps back for yours, mine, our Baylor Bears. Talked about it a lot in the post game, but yeah, that UCF game, that was a fluke. I don't know how else you can put it. That was a fluke. And it will be a small footnote in Baylor football history when you look back and you see, wow, that is the biggest comeback in Baylor history. You know, you look at the other two. Oh, one against Kansas. Oh, yeah, 2011. That was the year RG3 won the Heisman. Oh, 2014. Yeah, 61-58. What is this? They came down from 28? They came back from 28 down against UCF in 2023? What happened that year? Oh, wait. That was the end of the Aranda era. They stunk. They went 4-8 and eight that year. That's what it's going to be, looking back on it. Because it's only a big win. It's only a great win. It's only a mem- a real memorable win. I mean, we who have watched it will remember it, but it's only a real memorable win if you do something about it, if it becomes something. Instead, it doesn't. Instead, it doesn't. And you're right back where you were. And that's just being a not good football team. Not a good football team, really, at all. Um, and, and there's no phase of the game where you say Baylor is good. There's no phase of the game where you say Baylor is better than three and three Texas tech. There is no phase of the game where you say Baylor has the advantage in this game against whatever team with the same record as you, the worst record than you, the better record than you. No point, no phase in the game where you say that about this Baylor bears team in the trenches where this team is supposed to be winning, uh, where the identity of this program is supposed to be, where this coaching staff is preaching on this is where you're going to win games, they're atrocious. Atrocious. Are they the worst offensive line in the Power Five? I don't know. Northwestern, Vanderbilt, who knows? But yeah, probably. They're right up there. That was brutal. Just a horrific performance. And they've got nothing out of the tackle position all year, no matter who you put in there. They don't have guys who can play tackle. They can't run block. They sure as heck can't pass block. Quarterbacks out there all on an island. Poor guy, man. He's he's laying it out there on the line every play. And he's giving it up for, for Baylor, for the brand, for you guys, for me. Some receivers are doing that too. But it's not coming together. It's not coming together at all. And I don't know where the wins come from. But looking deeper in the numbers, this is, I mean, this is all you really need to know. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the positive. Let's start with the positive because I'm pouring through the numbers as I'm as I'm flying back from Logan Airport in Boston, Massachusetts, where at 7 in the morning, not only do I get patted down by TSA for having pumpkin bread mix in my bag, because apparently that's where the the explosives could be. Two factory sealed boxes of pumpkin bread mix. One of them's totally fine, but that other one that the kid hasn't opened, that's got to have an explosive in it. Why else would he bring that on the plane? Why else would his dad give it to him? Good question. No, it wasn't that. It was like 6.30 in the morning, 7 in the morning, and I am seeing an old guy, like three families behind me in line with a Texas Tech hat on. I'm like, my man, I am in a place where no one has even heard of Texas Tech. T- to be fair, they haven't heard of Baylor either. They see my Baylor hat and they think it's a Boston University hat. And yet I cannot escape this. I can't escape this. That's what I was mad about. So I was like, I just want to just be a masochist here after this whole experience. So let's look at the stats a little bit more. And then I look at them and I say, you know, It's a pretty even game. If you look at the stats, total yards, Tech only outgains Baylor by 25. 
Beat him by 25 points. Passing yards, they don't even get to 200. Baylor's got 324. First downs, 18 to 17 in favor of Tech. <laughs> Total plays, they run the same amount, 68. Average yards per play, 5.4 to 5. Baylor has almost six more yards per completion. <laughs> this is where it gets ugly, folks. Red zone, about the same. Six for eight for Tech, two for three for Baylor. Time of possession, only an eight-second advantage to the Red Raiders. Bears win the turnover battle. <laughs> Sacks, not great. Tech gets six of them. But here's where it starts. This is where it starts to, to get ugly. Okay. Baylor only one penalty on the night, by the way. No, here's where it starts to get ugly. Third downs. Tech 10 of 18. Baylor four for 15. Likes not going to win you many games, right? Not going to win you many games. Uh, what was the other one I was looking at? Yeah, sacks adjusted yard average, 197 to 62. Yikes. So I gave you the average yards per play, 5.4 for Tech, 5 for Baylor. Not bad, about even. All right, average yards per completion. Baylor's almost six more, uh, five more, almost on the dot, actually. Average yards per rush, Tech, 4.4. Not great, but certainly not where you want to be as a defense. Um, Baylor, 0. 0.6. That's 0. 0.6 yards per rush. Let's look at third down. 10 of 18 to 4 of 15. How about fourth down? One of two for Tech. One of six for your Baylor Bears. Those weren't fourth and tens, folks. Those were not. Those were fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and three. And then let's look at the rushing yards to just Alamo this cake, baby. 186 for your Red Raiders. 117 for our Baylor Bears. Oh, sorry. Did I say 117? No. Knock a one off that. 17 yards rushing. 17 yards for the Bears. Multiply that by 10. And that is your total for Taj Brooks himself. 170. That's where you lose the game, folks. That's where it's all gone. That's where it's done. Baylor cannot run the football, and they can't stop the run. You are not going to win many games, and you're not going to have an equal time of possession like you had on this night, but Tech was scoring fast on a lot of those drives. So that's why it's even. Baylor got a lot more, a lot more possessions. They ran the same number of plays, <laughs> and they had the ball the same amount. This team's not going to win many games unless they adjust something fast. I don't think they can. I just don't think they have the personnel. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before, but... I don't think so. Now, there are some bright spots. There are some bright spots. Coverage down the field, I thought was actually pretty good. Baron Morton did not like this thing up at all. He didn't even, I mean, they didn't throw for 200 yards the whole game. I, he threw. He throws for 180 and four touchdown passes. It was good scheming by Kitley in the red zone, I got to say. It was. But had good plays. Had good coverage. Tevin Williams had a couple nice plays. And I'll tell you who had even more. Last week's Conference Defensive Player of the Week, I think National Defensive Player of the Week, as a freshman, won Caden Jenkins. He was real good, guys. He was real good. And he is this week's Athletic Brewing Impact Player of the Week. Okay? He was the guy. He was absolutely the guy. He was the game changer. Okay? He was the game changer. And he has been the last two weeks defensively he's a real bright spot in this backfield defensive backfield you got to keep him and he is the game changer to Baylor like athletic brewing is to non-alcoholic beers because athletic Bre athletic brewing they make beers that aren't beers and they actually taste good which is not something you get like really at all they actually taste good okay they got so many different flavors okay and they're they're great tasting they're award-winning. They beat out full-strength beers, so no hangovers. Over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beers, including IPAs, Golden, Sours, and more. All the kind of beers you like, they have, and they're not going to give you a hangover either. And they're constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to that variety. They're listening to you guys. They want to make sure you're testing it and seeing what they should keep and what they shouldn't. No hangovers ever. They're fit for all times. Okay, 
They're the kind of beer that you can have and enjoy during the tailgate and not throw the can at the players when they're not playing well because you should never do that, okay? So Athletic Brewing, near beer, that's what you're going to get with that. And you can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic beers at a store near you, or if you're like me and you don't like going to the store, you can buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's code Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing, fit. For how many times? For all time. Shifting gears. Now, normally I I usually do post-game press conferences at, at the end of my Monday show. And I, it's usually Dave, although I did do the players last week. And I'm going to stick with that theme, but I'm also going to put it in the second segment. I'm going to put it in right here in a minute because this was the most interesting player press conference at post-game that I think I've ever seen as a Baylor fan. This is, this is the best one since we're on to OU with Bryce Petty. Almost 10 years ago. This was Monterey Baldwin. Colleen Zone, one of the few bright spots in Baylor this at Baylor this year. And I mean him and Blake Shapin have been the bright spots on offense. And Monterey gets the only touchdown of the game for Baylor. He's the big play threat. And I gotta say, I'm worried about him staying here. I don't know any intel on this situation, but the kid is a player, man. And I can see him playing on Sundays, even at his size, which is really I mean, hindered, not, not hindered his ability, but hindered his popularity for years. It's the reason why he didn't get all these big D1 Power 5 offers. Baylor was his only Power 5 offer. And I got to say, man, there's a coach who loves offense and loves speed just 100 miles down the road. They got a pretty darn good team. I don't know anything about the situation, but Colleen's a little closer to Austin than it is to Waco. Anyway, Monterey Baldwin kept it real. Kept it real, real with us. In the press conference, okay? Not not embarrassing his teammates, not necessarily even throwing them under the bus, but telling us what they probably needed to hear, okay? And just keeping it real. Monterey, what do you got to say? Monterey, uh, obviously a lot of energy last week in that comeback. Where, you know, where was the energy lacking? Um, I feel like the energy was there, but the execution was Especially in the receiving room, and I can say that because I see it firsthand. We just didn't make the early plays that came to us, and I feel like that came back to hurt us. Because like we were, getting, we were moving the ball down the field, but we just didn't finish. And I feel like we started not moving, and I can take accountability, accountability for that. Monterey, you mentioned that. Moving the ball, but when you guys get in the red zone, I think at some point you guys had seven straight drives here in the Penn State in the red zone without a touchdown. What specifically is going wrong when you guys get to that area? Um, I feel like people are just waiting around, waiting for the next person to make the play, but that's not how we need to approach it. We need to treat every play like the touchdown play. Everybody needs to go their hardest. And I, I praise Blake this game because I feel like he played really hard, but I feel like the rest of the offense and the rest of the team didn't. So, I mean, I don't know what it's going to take, but we're going to have to start playing hard and giving our all every play. If you need a breather, you're going to be a breather, but you just got to give your all when you're playing in the game. Monterey, uh, talk about that long touchdown pass. Uh, it looked like you kind of bobbled it and kind of got it back in your hands. And then, did you, were you feeling then? I mean, because I got you within two scores there. Can you? Yeah. What, did that kind of give you that feeling you were coming back again because it got you back within two, two scores? I mean, it, it definitely gave us a spark because I don't feel like there was no point in this game where we were, we were not in the game. We didn't have a chance to win. Like, we scored how many points last game, and it wasn't even that at that point. So I just feel like it gave us a spark that we needed. And, you know, it's the, at that point, it wasn't too late. So we just got to learn how to finish and keep going every game. We got to be consistent. I think that's the thing. We can do it one week, but we got to do it the next week. Because last week was over. And we found ourselves down 21 points a game. And whatever it was, we didn't finish. So we just got to learn how to be consistent. Monterey, I want to make sure you, you said everyone has to start playing hard. You're six games into the season. Why would that be the case? Why would that not already be the case? Where's the momentum from last week? What's going on with this team? 
people were sitting around waiting for their, their, their buddy to make the play, when they didn't make the play, that play. Like, you got to keep every play like that. Because you never know when your opportunity is going to come. You never know when the ball may pop out. You do the backside cutoff and you can pick it up. Like, you do stuff like that. And people aren't doing that every play. We do it here now, but it's not every play. And that's why I say we got to be consistent with it. With it being the 16 minute season, I don't really know why, but I, I feel like people are just like here for the ride. And that's not what we're here for. We're here to win games. And people have to step up. People have to be leaders. People have to take accountability and stuff like that. So we have to, this is from growing up, we have to do. Moderate, what did you see from Tech's defense? They had six backs. They held Brad at 17 yards of rushing. Did that look like a much more aggressive defense than what you saw last season? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, we knew what they were going to do. And we knew what we were going to be able to do. We just had to execute like right? There was a lot of times where the play was there, but we just didn't execute to the best of our ability. So, I mean, I don't really know what to say. We're just going to have to figure it out. Like, we said in the locker room, don't give up. And we mean it. Don't give up. Because there's still a lot, like, at the end of the season that we can, that we can play for. So. Monterey's an offense, especially early when your defense is getting stopped, but you guys just can't seem to roll that over in this score. What's the frustration level like on the sideline for you guys, and how do you deal with that throughout the game? Well, we try to keep the frustration like We try to keep it away. We try to keep all the negative energy away and just relax. And whatever play Coach Grimes wants to call, we try to go out there with the best of our ability and run that play and execute that play. But we just have to learn how to, how to execute. If the play's not there, we got to learn how to make it work. And I feel like that's the one thing that we can get better at and we will get better at is just making every play work. That's the best thing. Monterey, you've had to have some soul searching yourself this year. Coach Aranda has talked about it. You have too. It, 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 does this team need that as a team? It, it, did you quit tonight as a team? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I would hope not. I mean, I can only see so much, but I know from the people I did see, we didn't quit. Like I said, Blake played his heart out. Blake was taking his food, running people over. Like, and I can't, I can lose with somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I when I see Blake going hard like that, it makes me want to go hard. So when everybody goes hard, everybody goes hard. But we just have to stay together. Like, I don't know. I don't really know. Thanks, Monterey. That was. There's a lot to break down there. There is. There's a lot going on in that that uh, isn't all positive, but it's probably a good thing to hear, you know, because uh, I see, we see it all the time. All these people who are just sick of the same old lines from Dave Aranda. And look, Dave, I think, is pretty genuine. And I think everyone will agree Monterey Baldwin is genuine, truly. And in the third segment, we're going to break down the things that he said because it's damning, but as a Baylor fan... And hopefully as a Baylor player in that locker room, I think it's good to hear. It's what we're all thinking, and it's good to hear. But first, we got to talk about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. Karnak says, what are three things the Baylor Bears haven't really had all season and definitely didn't have Saturday night? Okay, they also said it's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, okay? From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whatever you need for that car, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Monterey Baldwin has all those things. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part, is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP or the Heisman and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. And yes, like they always do, exclusions do apply. So looking more at that Monterey Baldwin sound. That's as honest as you can get, folks. They ask him, do you think 
Your teammates really wanted to be out there, essentially, is what they ask. I think your guys really wanted to be out there? He said, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think some of these guys are just along for the ride. And uh, I don't want to say it's refreshing to hear that because you don't, you know, you don't want that to be the case, but it does justify what so many fans have been saying, myself included, that there are times out there where it, it just looks so flat that these guys don't really look all that interested in playing. And it feels like they have nothing to play for because as fans, there's not much to root for in terms of what this season is going to be. Of course, we're going to be out there and going to root for them. It's, it's our alma mater. It's the school we love. But it looks like out there that some of these guys just don't seem very interested. And Monterey says it, man. I mean, he says, look, Blake left it all out there on the field yet again. But our guys on offense, especially, uh, it, th th there was no intensity there. They didn't look like they had the will to play and that they're along here for the ride and they're just waiting for it to fall into their lap. They're waiting for other guys to make the play. And what's funny is it, it, you see that play out on the field. So often this year, we have seen Monterey Baldwin just pick this team up by their bootstraps. I mean, mostly the last two weeks, right? But he has been the catalyst. He and Blake have been the catalyst in the only bright spots of this season. And it's, they certainly look disinterested on Saturday night. They certainly look disinterested against Texas. And they look disinterested for a lot of that win against Long Island. Uh, look disinterested in the first part of the game against UCF. One thing I will push back on, and I guess it does require a little bit more context, but he basically said, we, we got to finish. And I think he was talking about finishing plays, but the way I read it the first time was, we got to learn how to finish some games. And my brother's, you guys got to learn how to start games. You got to learn how to start games. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this this week, but, and this is not a new thing. This is going into last year as well, but this season they have fallen behind 21 to six, 28 to three, 21 to nothing and 17 to three. In the first half of these games, good teams have trouble coming back from that. This is not a good team, not a good team. And you are spotting your opponents double digits, at least two touchdowns. Every time you take the field, you can't win like that. You can't. And of course, a lot of these guys are going to check out. That's not a good excuse, but that's what you expect to happen when you fall behind like that every time out. So again, you got to ask, is that on the players? A little bit, yeah. But it's also on the coaches. And it's probably mostly on the coaches because week in, week out, we watch this team and we are ready to cheer our hearts out for them. And they're not ready to play the game. They're not. Each week, they just don't have that fire coming out of the locker room. And you see it in the first halves of every game. This was a damning example because you knew Tech was ready. I said it on the Drake Toll Show this week, which I co-host on. I should listen to that ESPN Central Texas and on YouTube every weekday, 12 to 2 Central Time. I said, I, this is a perfect game for Joey. He is the master motivator. He's a fine X's and O's guy, but he's not the X's and O's coach. He's not the X's and O's guy that Dave Aranda is. But he is the rah-rah, get your guys ready to get out there and run through a brick wall coach. And they lost by 28 points. They got embarrassed on their home field last year. And now he's coming back to Waco a place where he probably expected because all the way the players are talking that he was going to be the head coach and a team that embarrassed him in year one. And he's trying to get his season back on track, a season with a bunch of expectations out Raiderland, and they just smacked you in the mouth. It was perfect of what Joey McGuire wanted. 14 points right off the jump, out muscled them the whole game, just run it right down their throats. They were... I mean, kind of in that game, but never really in that game. They had one play they needed to make to get back in it, and you just knew they weren't going to make it. They made the play when it was, what, 24-3. to three, They finally made the play. The Monterey Baldwin touchdown. This, this plays right into Joey's hands because he can get a team fired up coming out of the locker room. That's no problem for him. And he knows that this is a... 
this is a horse with a broken leg on the other end. And if and if we go out there and we smack them in the mouth like we're supposed to, we don't got to play four quarters. They got a broken leg. You can take them out to pasture if we go up 14 nothing on them. That's exactly what happened. And from what we see in the stands and on TV and in the press box, Monterey Baldwin is 100% right on this. His, some of his teammates are just coasting by. And I hope it lights a fire under him. Because... As much as it looks like they're coasting by, they are putting in the work every day. It's clearly not enough, not enough work, but this is your this is your life when you're a college athlete. It, it revolves around this schedule, the practices and the games. And, and trust me, I, I know a lot of uh, mostly former Baylor athletes not uh, involved with the football team, but you can see it on Twitter, some of the guys who were on the football team. They're not saying, hey, well, these guys are part of the athlete brotherhood. We can't criticize them. They're embarrassed too. They're seeing it too. And they they do not like the products that, that's going out there. And it's really tough to deny that exactly what Monterey said, that, that guys are just waiting for someone else to make the play. There's no separation on offense. There's no time to throw anyway. There's, there's no open field tackling. There's no containing the edge. There's mental mistakes. Although they have limited them, only one penalty. Woo, congrats. You won the penalty battle, lost by 25 points. So this is interesting, and it's something that we have a bye week for. So we're going to pick it apart this week. We're going to, we're going to hear all of the press conferences this week. Uh, but I think Monterey Baldwin said what we were all thinking as fans. You know, again, he, he's, not, he's not naming names. He's not necessarily throwing his teammates under the bus in the paper and on YouTube. He's saying, this is on all of us. But yeah... Some of these guys are not working as hard as they should. That's what you need in a team. A lot of that comes in the locker room, but if it needs to, if he needs to be honest and answer that way, he's going to answer that way. And I'll be interested to see how they come out in two weeks against Cincinnati with two weeks to prepare against a not good team in Cincinnati on the road with your season very much on life support. Look, I, I can't see a bowl game. I can't see them going four and two the rest of the way. But it's there. It's there for the taking. And if these guys aren't fighting for it, what are they fighting for? Knocking up their stats to go in the transfer portal? We'll see. That's what I'm interested to see. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit more about that this week. I know this is not a fun one to break down. We're going to talk this week about what Baylor has to play for, what we can look for out of this team, and what hope we as fans can grasp going forward. Because right now, this isn't the worst team in the conference. A, they're they're right there. They're just a tier below Houston right now. But it 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 feels hopeless. It feels hopeless. You got two months of the season. Long shot for them to make a bowl game. And now you got players saying, yeah, some of my teammates aren't ready to go out there and play. Just confirming what we've been seeing all season long. So let's talk it out because we'll have episodes for you all week. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. I'm Cam Stewart. I've got a headache, but it's it's so nice to be able to talk to you guys. i got a headache from football, and Bayward does not have Excedrin. But we will get through this together, hopefully quietly. This has been, always will be, Locked on Baylor.